This is chapter five. The truth that sets you free. The drama of life is a psychological one in which all the conditions, circumstances, and events of your life are brought to pass by your assumptions. Since your life is determined by your assumptions, you are forced to recognize the fact that you are either a slave to your assumptions or their master. To become the master of your assumptions is the key to undreamt of freedom and happiness. You can attain this mastery by deliberate conscious control of your imagination. You determine your assumptions in this way. Form a mental image, a picture of the state desired of the person you want to be. Concentrate your attention upon the feeling that you already are that person. First visualize the picture in your consciousness, then feel yourself to be in that state as though it actually formed your surrounding world. By your imagination, that which was mere mental image is changed into a seemingly solid reality. Now this is what I liked about this part, is everything that he just said can be applied to what you're living in now based upon what you were imagining, thinking, and feeling then, yesterday, yesteryear. Everything I just read can be said of now. And it's brilliant writing because it literally allows for that. Listen to this. Then feel yourself to be in that state as though it actually formed your surrounding world. This surrounding world that we're now in was formed by the feelings of being in this state yesterday, <laughs> you know what I mean? By our imagination, that which was mere mental image is changed into seemingly solid reality. See, even now, this seems real seeming reality it's an interphase right like the little icon down in the corner of your desktop you know that icon is not the recycle bin right but you drag and delete things into that recycle bin that's merely an interphase so that we the user don't have to go through all the data ones and zeros and all the processing to quote, delete the thing or recycle the thing or whatever. But the, but the point is that little icon on the desktop, it's an interface. It just allows us to do what needs to be done more easily, right? <laughs> even this matter, even this reality that you're now in, listening to my voice through the screen of whatever, seems real, seems like solid reality. It's just far out, man. <laughs> you're God. Make it. The great secret is a controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention firmly and repeatedly focused on the object to be accomplished. Persistence, devotion, dedication, loyalty, perseverance, right? Discipline. It cannot be emphasized too much that by creating an ideal within your mental sphere, by assuming that you are already that ideal, you identify yourself with it and thereby transform yourself into its image. You know, this was called by the ancient teachers subjection to the will of God or resting in the Lord. And the only true test of resting in the Lord is that all who do rest are inevitably transformed into the image of that in which they rest. Now this could tie into that whole, you know, get your imagination for the dream fulfilled, really rolling before you go to sleep at night. 
But I was chewing on it earlier on account of subjection to the will of God, right? Subjection that could be defined or, you know, interpreted as opposed to objective, having a subjective view, which is the small I, which is the particular arrangement of that core substance we we're talking about, like, you know, the man, the father, the American, all those different roles, those feathers in our hats that we might keep. The little me, the little eyes, right? To be embodied by the I am, right? In other words, the subjection to the will of God, allowing I am to pervade those smaller facets of consciousness that we live by, the little eyes, in other words. Or the term subjection could simply be like, you know, I am your subject. I am your loyal subject. You know, what do you ask of me? I shall, I shall do, you know, like, but either way, no matter how you cut it, it all makes sense. Subjection to the will of God. It's letting or resting, resting, right? Resting in the Lord. It's letting go, letting go of control, the data, letting go of the need to know and to understand and get a harness and a handle on it and a grip with white knuckles, right? No. No, it's just let go and let God. And the only true test of resting in the Lord is that all who do rest are inevitably transformed into the image of that which they rest. You will become according to your resigned will. And your resigned will is your concept of yourself and all that you consent to and accept as true. All that you consent to and accept as true. It's all you. You assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled and continuing therein, take upon yourself the results of that state. Not assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled, you are ever free from the results. When you understand the redemptive function of imagination, you hold in your hands the key to the solution of all your problems. Every phase of your life is made by the exercise of your imagination. Determined imagination alone is the means of your progress, of the fulfilling of your dreams. It is the beginning and end of all creating. The great secret is a controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention firmly and repeatedly focused on the feeling of the wish fulfilled until it fills the mind and crowds out all other ideas from consciousness. What greater gifts could be given you than to be told the truth that will set you free? The truth that sets you free is that you can experience in imagination what you desire to experience in reality. And by maintaining this experience in the imagination, your desire will become an actuality. You are limited only by your uncontrolled imagination and lack of attention to the feeling of your wish fulfilled. When the imagination is not controlled and the attention not steadied on the feeling of the wish fulfilled, then no amount of prayer or piety or invocation will produce the desired effect. When you can call up at will whatever image you please, when the forms of your imagination are as vivid to you as the forms of nature, you can master your fate. Visions of beauty and splendor, forms of a long lost race, sounds and faces and voices from the fourth dimension of space, and on through the universe, boundless, our thoughts go lightning shod, some call it imagination and others call it God.